Hello and welcome to VVORC. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 22 in a 10 part video series in which we are exploring how to automate using VMware vRealize Orchestrator. As you can see from the title, in this video, we're going to continue talking about looping as we've done in the previous two videos. But in this video, what we're going to be talking about is how to create a loop like we did in the last video. But in the last video, we were working with the decision based loop that was looping across an ar array of objects. In this case, we're going to be working with looping through a stack of objects. But before we begin, take a look in the YouTube description down below. If you haven't already downloaded it, you need to download the uh, example package. Take a look at the URL down below. That'll get to the file. If you don't know how to get this file, go to video number 14. It'll explain it. But let's assume that you've got the file with the package all uploaded and let's actually go look at the lab environment. So let me flip over here to my lab environment. And as you can see, I'm still in my previous workflow. Let me cancel out of there. Yeah, no, I was actually working, so let me save it. Um, we are gonna look at a different workflow. Instead of our array looping workflow, this time we're gonna look at a workflow called stack looping. And if you look at the array looping workflow versus the stack looping workflow, you'll notice that they're very similar. Uh, there are some, there's one immediately obvious difference. There's a schema element that's no longer necessary here. Remember the increment counter or increase counter schema element? When you're working with stacks, you don't need that. Um, but what is a stack? I realize some of you may not be aware of what a stack is, so let's talk about stacks. Just like an array, is a, a, a data structure that allows us to store data. Stacks are another common type of data structure that different programming languages implement. But before we get all technical, in case you've never truly ever encountered a stack before, let me use an analogy here. Uh, I'm gonna go to images.google.com and I'm going to search for cafeteria plate stacker. And as you can see here, let's find one. Where's an obvious one? I just saw one a few moments ago. Where, there's a plate stacker. Have you ever gone into a cafeteria? At the, usually at the beginning of the cafeteria, there's uh, something, it may not be a portable device like this. I have no idea what the, 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 the plug is for. What are they doing, heating the, heating the plates? But anyways, uh, I'm not interested in what's going on down here, but rather what's going on the top of this plate stacker. This is a stack of plates and as you know from going into cafeterias, you can get a plate by popping one plate off of the top of the stack. Or if you want to, you can push a plate onto the stack. Now with these stackers, the only place that you can work with the items in the stack is on the top of the stack. You push things onto the stack, you pop things off. That's the way it works in the cafeteria and that's also how stacks work in the programming world. Uh, whereas with an array, I can put, uh, I can go to any array element in any order just by changing the index value. Uh, and additionally with an array, I can insert any uh, array element in any order just by changing the, the index value. With a stack, you can only push a new value onto the top of the stack and you can only pop a value off the stack, which admittedly somewhat limits the, the functionality of using a stack, but stacks can sometimes be very, very useful. So don't rule them out. All right, so now that we have the analogy of what a stack is, let's go back into our environment here and see how a stack is used in this workflow. So in this workflow here, uh, let's go to the general tab. And if you've seen the previous video, you'll notice that we have the exact same variables we had in the last video, except we don't need that I counter variable, the counter variable called I. We do still need a attribute in which to store the amount of memory. We do need a variable in which to store the uh, single VM that we're working with each time we go through the loop. And we still need an array. Now, this is a little strange sounding. Uh, in other programming languages, stacks are their own thing. But in JavaScript, a stack is implemented as an array. Speaking of arrays, let's go back to the API Explorer we saw this briefly before, but I intentionally jumped through it. Uh, earlier, we were looking at arrays and we saw that one of the properties of the array is its length. But if you're watching real closely before, you may have noticed that array objects 
have a method called pop and a method called push, which with those methods allows us to treat this array as if it was a stack. So we're going to work with the same variable that we did in the previous video, a variable called VMS. That's an array of VC colon virtual machines, but instead of using an index variable called I to get to the individual VMs in that array, we're gonna treat the array as a stack that we can pop items off of. So if we go back to the schema, and let me go into edit mode here. In the schema, get all VMs is the same action that we called in the previous video. All it's doing is getting a, an, a list of all the VMs in our virtual infrastructure, and it's shoving them into the array called VMS, which through uh, parameter bindings getting handed off to this decision element. So let's look at the decision element. Now, in the previous video, the test portion of the decision element used the I index value so that we'd know how far into the array we are. Well, here, with, when we treat the array as a stack, we're not going to have an I variable, a counter variable that we can look at, and instead what we're gonna need to do is to uh, use a different trick. So let's see how it works. So we edit, and uh, looking at the scripting here, when we go through this loop, treating the array as a stack, each time we go through the loop and we pop off an item from the stack, then that stack, that array, has one less item in it. And as a result, the length of the array gets less and less each time we go through the loop. And if ever we get to the point where the length of the array is zero, or I suppose it could be less than zero, shouldn't, but if, if if we ever encounter a situation where the length is not greater than zero, then we need to get out of this loop because there's nothing left on that stack. There's nothing in the array. So this code here says return, it, as long as the VM's length is greater than zero, that means there's at least one VM and therefore we want this to return true so that we will go down the green path. So that actually makes this, uh, in some ways, makes this code a little simpler. I don't have to work with the that I variable anymore. I still do need to do binding. I got to bring in the VMs variable, but I don't have to bring in the I variable that I had to before. So with the stack, this decision gets a little simpler. With the next schema element where we're trying to get a hold of one VM, uh, this too gets a bit simpler. Let's edit this. So we're going to bring in the array of VMs. We're not going to bring in the I counter variable because it doesn't exist. We just bring in the VMs variable, and here's what our code looks like. So VM equals, so VM, that's the variable we're gonna stick the one VM into, equals VMS, that's the array that we're trading as a string, dot pop, open, close, parenthesis, semicolon, boom, done. That will not only, that will not only see to it that one VM gets shoved into the variable called VM, it will also pop a VM out of the array, off of the stack, thereby reducing the stack by one. Now, if you want to do uh, this type of stack manipulation, you darn well better get the visual binding set up right. So you got to bring in the VMs array so that we can see what's in the array. And unlike before when we were working with arrays, when you're treating the array as a stack, if you're going to pop something off the stack, that means you're changing the stack. That means you need an outward binding for that VMs variable. Don't forget the outward binding. But if we do that much, if you understand that much of this workflow, the rest is exactly the same as before. So we take the one VM that we got, we find out how much memory it has. In the next schema element, we log that information. And uh, while well, we don't need the increment counter schema element anymore, instead we just loop back. If there's another VM, we loop again and again and again and again and again until we're done and we pop out. So uh, take a look here. Let me just double check this here. Do I have the same typo I had in the other script? Yeah, that shouldn't say name. That should say memory here. But otherwise, you've seen how, uh, in this example, you've seen how uh, treating an array as a, st a stack works. Now, a few words if you are interested in using the, this stack approach that I've talked about before. Um, that's fine. You can use stacks, but don't count on a particular order in the stack. The stack is just whatever order items got put in, they're gonna come out in the reverse order. 
And furthermore, if you use stacks, be aware that if you pop something off the stack, you are changing the stack contents. Unlike an array, with an array, you can index into whatever part of the array you want, and you're not uh, modifying the array, but with stacks, you are. So you don't have to use stacks if this was just all fun and interesting, you never want to use them, that's totally fine with me. You don't have to use stacks. Um, if anything, the previous video is more important than this one, but this video here about stacks gives you some more flexibility in how you can work with your orchestrator workflows. So that's it for this particular video. In fact, that's it for our decision-based looping constructs. But in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at another way of doing looping using something called the for each schema element. So see you over in video number 23.